okay then let's start let's uh so one mm, second let me just share my screen quickly so do you like the screen hi everyone yeah yeah yep. yes 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 thank you thank you very much for joining okay so it's sunday evening over here in india and sunday morning in us <laughs> you are listening to me other than chuck for all it simply shows your dedication towards your learning i mean i really applaud that so this session is for all the folks working in service now platform as a admin developer or wants to move one step ahead okay and looking for direction or resources on how to proceed okay so this is the first session of series journey to stars and all future topics uh, will be decided by you guys okay so at the end of the presentation uh, i'll mail you one link feedback link just say the topic we'll decide we'll vote and we'll fix it we'll try to continue as regular as we can so let me just check if someone is waiting in the lobby hardeep hi hardeep hardeep hello Lots of folks are joining. Ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. Okay. Fine then. Let's. Okay. Should have kept it. Okay. So let me start with my introduction. My name is Dhruv Gupta. I have total four years of experience. and all in service now other than service now i love drumming uh google hall of famer in regards to certificate i have got few so it's your time to introduce okay so just put on your name your experience and tell me one most craziest thing that you have done in this lockdown period okay so let me start okay i'll put on the chat So do it like this. Oops. Of Gupta, four years. Craziest thing. Uh, well, I have counted all the tiles of my house. Many of you have done that, right? So let's see. Hi Vivek, so Vivek Verma. Hi Andrew. What's up, buddy? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good, man. So I can't see anyone typing. So Vivek, uh, I just asked people to introduce themselves, put their name, experience, and. the craziest thing they, that they have done in this lockdown period okay let me write them shot sing karaoke yeah i saw your app man i really loved it i mean that is really good It's been a lot of fun, a lot of learning too. Mm, yep. Yeah, I tried building it. So, if I tell you the first thing that I really liked about uh, when I was starting my journey, so there was one thing that you built was through Amazon buttons, I guess. For oh yeah. Writing. That was the first thing that I really liked. So Priyanka has five years of experience. Bought a puppy. What's her name? Oh, Shadow. Nice. Um, Krishna, 15 years teaching younger kids maths. I never understood that maths. Teaching kids. Lots of people are teaching their kids. Their kids or 
own kids <laughs> uh, are the talking sanskrit taking sanskrit lessons that was nice. fantastic that is fantastic that, that is yeah. fantastic yeah <laughs> Loved it actually. This is really nice. Yep. Good. Four AM yoga. That's great, man. Okay. So, Vivek. react based app come on vivek working on application development in lockdown i think you haven't done something crazy that is a regular thing right this is all i am doing i <laughs> <laughs> i'm with you take advantage of the time <laughs> i've spent way too many holidays and birthdays and one now working on service of project yeah yeah you know i started uh, uh replying on community i mean that is the best thing that i have utilized that is a good thing but i asked for the craziest thing man this is not the craziest thing okay abdul focusing on weight loss yeah man even i am trying <laughs> for that but it's not going my way okay five years of experience i've been average running wow four miles three times a week that's cool Manoj is enjoying his time. Baby boy, one year old. Just to my father. Okay, guys, let's continue. So, ah, uh, let's first define the scope. I mean, the plan. So, I have divided it in four sections. So, first, we'll talk about the service now certificates, various levels of certifications that we have. then we'll speak about talk about now learning now create now creator all the stuff that service now has provided for learning then we'll move on to third part that is going to be very interesting where i'll show all the blogs all the channels that i have been following and i'll recommend them uh, you to follow or we can do a activity that we can subscribe them one by one so that you don't miss anything otherwise i'll create an article on the community and share the link after that at the end i'll open the session for q and a so this is going to be my favorite part okay so i request you to utilize that as much as you can okay so if that sounds like a plan then let's start so let's move on to certification so service now has basically four levels of certifications okay starting with micro certifications so these are smaller certificates that are targeted for special uh, special products like agent intelligence flow designer i'll show you them all one by one they do not cover that bigger area like uh, that is covered by cis and best part uh, it's free and you are allowed to take uh, three attempts for uh, without redoing the training okay so let me show you a list of certificates uh, micro certificates okay so here is the list i'll share this link so it's a frequently asked question so it is updated last on 11 march there have been certain changes so important is to understand how to read this okay so uh, it has cis as well as micro and all the certifications but important thing that people ask me about that everything is paid they say everything is paid that is not at all true okay so if you start with micro certification itself so if you can let me just uh go it okay it took me to csm uh let me scroll it down a bit okay so just uh, see this icon that laptop kind of thing so it shows that it is self paced on demand so it is kind of free training most of the micro certs are free except a few like uh, for cs uh, this csm one you need to go for csm fundamentals and service portal is not free and other than that performance analytics one of the training is free and one of is paid but it has not been mentioned but we can check that on now learning as well okay so the certificate micro certification you can do all okay so that is good but for the starting 
i'll recommend to go for the cmdb first okay so people who are moving to consultant level or uh, platform implementation point of view or item specifically so i'll recommend to have a good understanding of these uh, two uh, understanding of cmdb so these two micro certifications or training covers a lot literally a lot uh, you don't need to learn anything other than that okay so it has simulators and everything so you can go for it other than that uh, i'll recommend performance analytics predictive intelligence flow design and integration hub that are the point of the basics so if you are good at that at least they will give you a start point let's rest you can practice and the links that i'll share later on uh, you will see people using them live okay so we'll come on to that afterwards okay so what was next then is its mainline certifications that has admin cad and one certification specifically for performance analytics and 15 module specific cis okay so these are broader in scope each one has a training associated to it and if you have partner portal access so how many okay so i'll show you one thing so i regularly get this comment that you know uh, this is not how to become a cis without paying okay so i'll show you so service now is doing a lot but it's just that we need to be uh, aware of the stuffs okay so i am just logging off and i'll log in from my partner portal account that i have got from my company so if you have a partner portal account that would be quite good actually i mean most of the uh, partners give that so i remember the password so in as a partner you have admin certification free till july uh, four mainline certification uh, four cis certification that you can do free of cost are discovery event management apm and ppm so you can see uh, you just need to for discovery and event management you just need to search for self paced so you will get a training for it uh you need to write a if you enroll for this any of these uh suppose i open this event management one i have completed this i got a voucher from this as well i have given exam through this only you just need to mail uh, at the training at the rate service now dot com that i have completed this training i uh, i have enrolled for this training kindly provide me with the instance so they will provide you with the instance for 15 days and the book link is over here okay so if you open this link it would be uh, i guess a uh, non downloadable link but you can always refer to that document it's a lab guide okay hello hello yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, Dhru. Ah, uh, Dhru. Ah, uh, I have a doubt. Ah, uh, what about Miss Yorvas? Ah, if we want to do practice for the team and management. Yeah, yeah. That is what. That is what. Discovery and mid servers. Ah, uh, discovery and event management training have this. Ah, uh, mid server set up as their labs. So the okay. service now will provide you with everything. The training instance, the Windows server, and everything. Okay. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So other than that, ah, uh, there are few. i told you about four five main lines so if you take out their cost is like 1700 dollars each into five okay so it would be like service now is already investing in each developer almost around 19 uh, 80 some 8000 dollars okay so if you are not taking advantage of that then you are at the losing end other than that uh, the update that i have is Uh, there are lots of training that are coming up in now learning for uh, that is for certificates as well i mean their fundamental part would be free or their main line would be free so it would be somewhere around november december so it's just a it's not confirmed but somehow it's the news that i have okay so what else third level is uh, suit certificate so 
currently there are four suit certificates one for itsm one for csm and two for hr so it's uh they are the aggregated certifications uh, that align to product packages and automatically granted once you complete the requirements so what do we mean by the requirements okay so by requirements we mean that for example the itsm certificate is suit certificate is a combination of cis plus these three micro certifications so as soon as you complete all the four requirements the suit certification would be automatically granted to you you don't have to do anything so similarly for itsm we have uh, one for itsm known as itsm professional suit certificate one csm professional and two for hr the only difference that we have here is uh, life cycle events that is one of the micro certification that you need to do other than that the highest level is uh, cma that is certified master architect program it's an elite level certification uh, it's currently limited to applicants from service now and partners okay so let me just let me just redo that so that i can show you the link okay so let me just copy that certified master architect link Windows tab, browser, browser. So, in case you want any information about certified master architect, there's a knowledge article over here. So, you can have a look on that. Okay. So, I'll share its link. So, it's an elite program. So, it's a six month long program with two weeks of on site programming and it has uh, various prerequisites. Uh, like uh, five years of experience, ITIL certifications, and CAD is there, three CIS is required. So the only thing that is left in mind is uh, five years of experience. So once I get that, I'll definitely try for this. Okay, so now let's move to the resources that we have got from service law. So first one being the docs and community sites. Okay, so we all have gone to these two sites, right? Docs and community sites, right? So docs.servicenow.com is the official documentation site. If you need to know anything about out of box or minor configurations, you will find it over there. It has been redesigned utilizing now experience. So there have been lots and lots of things. So earlier it was not that good but now it has been it has become really really good so what i have missed hyphen so it uh, you can uh, select the these are the re release notes okay so you can select the product uh, you want to go for you let me just select suppose i want to see field service management I can select the release for which I want to read the docs. So it has become very easy and very interactive kind of thing. So it is really good. So 80% of the things are being over here. You can find in the documentation itself. And if there are some things that are requirement based rest, you can find on the community. Community is really good. I have been working on it. Uh, it has benefited a lot. So it's like environments are almost same i mean the requirements that we get some some other folk might have get in earlier stage you have this is one of the most active community i have been seeing this communities like i have seen the community of service now salesforce azure powershell the community from service now the people are really really very active i mean the question is posted and the answer you get that is very easy so just one thing uh, the only mistake that we might make or we should be aware of that while asking question just select the proper forum okay so it will be like uh, suppose i am looking in the itsm my forte is itsm and item so while answering question or searching for question i'll filter it by itsm or itbm or item whatever i want so i can see that question so it would be great if while posting question if you select the correct forum okay next it's great other than we have 
developer.servicelaw.com so so again it also has been redesigned uh, just uh, be sure about this sessions okay event session is very important so there are regular meetups that are happening so you can connect over there so you can find a meetup near to you other than that it has got some really good trainings okay so if i show you that learn then learning plans okay so you can choose based on your roles okay so it is kind of it's the way i started when i started service now i didn't have anything other than developer.servicenow.com and it has really helped me if you are good at self learning then it's really good i mean really really good so i'll show you some learning plans okay when we move to the other slide first let's go to now learning uh we went over here so it is uh now learning is the latest uh, platform for from service now it has n number of trainings really really very good trainings that you want to learn in short times it has knowledge sessions as well knowledge labs simulator simulators are kind of real world scenarios that would be presented to you so it's like uh, when we started and and most of the folks have this uh, question that how to gain experience i mean i have read the book what to do next so you can always go for these uh, simulators you can filter them based on the role your level product based suppose i want to learn about say item so if i filter it it will show me all the courses related to item it's all on the now experience okay so we have planned one session on now experience as well that will do next to next week but it's really good just try the simulators just try the trainings it will help you and it's a continuous learning thing okay then yes. i have one thing to ask uh, i have a partner portal lexis so you told me that there are uh, four self paced uh, i mean trainings available for uh, event management discovery and uh, i mean other topic as well so how to get uh, the simulator for that I mean, simulator partner. simulators yeah. are ev for everyone whether it's a partner or it's a, a normal account but for the thing that you are uh, asking is you are asking for training instance right not the simulator yeah right right you need to drop an email to our training at the rate service now.com that i have enrolled for this so kindly provide me with the instance so if it has an instance associated it would be provided so it's like let me just show you that uh self paced uh when management let me see if they have wrote it over here um, it's information has not been provided but you need to send an email to them that uh, i have enrolled for this training kindly provide me with the training instance they will send you within a uh, five day five days uh, working five business days and you will get an instance and as well as what we call windows server where you can install your mid servers and everything so okay. they won't provide you any training but it would be like you have to go on your own it's self paced you have the book you have the resources you just have to read and practice that's how it goes so it's something like uh, sir, like there is a program service now csa there is a self paced program so it will be similar to that right in csa you have uh, the currently that we have is a training that is interactive training right in that you don't require any instance or anything you have a simulator down there okay but here you don't have any simulator it's a book even if you see the training is completed it's just have one thing to open the book there is nothing in this training all the stuff is here in this book hello guru yeah 
May I speak? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, with this, uh, you know, the training instance, I think on developer.servicenode.com, we, uh, we can get one instance for 10 days. Will it be... No, no, no. Uh, that is good? different, brother. That is different. That is your personal okay. developer instance. I'll come on to that. Okay. So, okay. okay. So, so uh, one more book, after going through this book, uh, we will be, I mean, after completing this, we, we will get the voucher, right? After that. Voucher, yeah, yeah, voucher you will get. You don't, you, it's just the training that you need to complete. So, it's something oh. like this. So, if you see, it's a guided setup and everything. It's a training manual. It has the labs, VM creation, technical event generation, everything. So, it's a kind of complete hands-on kind of thing. Hello, okay. God. Got it. Thanks. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Who's that? Um. Uh. Sreevanth. May I speak? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh. That uh, self-paced event management in Discord is not for everyone, right? Yeah. It's partner portal. Partner portal. Okay. Uh. Dhruv. Uh. Tosi yeah. here. Uh -huh. Uh. Dhruv. May I know, like, what are the prerequisite to learn ITOM? Uh. For that. For event management, you are asking? Uh, no, for discovery and uh, service mapping. So, there is nothing known as prerequisite. Okay, so if you are going for discovery training, what there are only recommendations. So, if you are good at service now, uh, if you have started, that thing is module specific that you can get from here. So, you just need to type CIS blueprint and the module name. Okay, so if I open this, uh, you will have some prerequisite design over here uh, discovery fundamentals so you need to recommend it training see there are no as such prerequisite but there are recommended training so if you are good I, at service so, I, yeah. I got to know that uh, people who want to learn discovery should have uh, networking knowledge and power shell scripting, shell scripting. No, no no nothing like that service now is if i have to code powershell then there is no use of having some I think probably we need to do the, the, the works and the sensors, we need to customize them. We may need it, but it is not. Hey, uh, someone, is, someone is, noise is coming in the background. Okay, so that thing we can discuss. Okay, so let's move forward so that we can reach a Q&A session so that we can discuss everything over there. So let me just complete with the presentation. I just want to wrap that up so that we can focus on other stuffs. Okay. Okay. So now learning a program that has lots of training that I showed you. Now creator, it's it's one of my favorite. <laughs> Recently we, we I got one T-shirt from them. So let me tell you what is a now creator. Okay, let me just see the link. It's here. All again here oh uh, it will ask me to sign in through my should go for single sign on it's basically a path it will give you a broader scope okay so if I am an admin it's a super badge kind of thing I'll show you so there are five roles currently but service now is adding more roles over here okay so suppose I want to become an administrator admin so it has three levels every five uh, verticals has three levels like star pro and legend okay so you have uh, certain trainings or certain activities that you need to perform to get this uh, badge okay and these activities are quite good uh, this will give you a broader scope of service now it will tell you how to interact uh, how to see for example if you see how to lead your organization transformation uh, these are success documents that if you read, uh, they will give you a broader scope, how to approach an implementation, how to see things in a broader way. So when you talk to a customer that that this thing prepares you for that. 
so it's really good just complete those activities okay and you get uh, some sort of super badge okay so i if you want to see my progress so it's a partner portal account let me just go on to my regular account i'll show you how much i have achieved so that in case you have any queries you can always come to me there is one more thing that has been recently launched by service now that is now create don't con get confused with now creator and now create these are two separate things currently we are looking at now creator okay then we'll go on now create let me just log in to my profile uh hello dhru yeah uh i'm uh, sorry for interrupting uh what is a partner portal okay so uh suppose uh, an organization is service now partner okay so for that you need to suppose my organization is a service now partner then okay. we have different levels of uh partner levels so once you become a partner then you get the access to partner portal okay okay partner portal is a kind of service now initiative for its partner it where we get lots of documentation lots of added advantages of being a partner over other companies okay so oh. and through want, and through partner portal we can uh, uh, get access to high portal or also we can get through personal id no no, no. Through, through personal id you can't get high portal is different high portal is for raising your tickets okay, okay. so if you want to check uh, if your company is a partner or not uh, you just need to go to this url find a partner dot html and you can search by name for example if i type on my cognizant and search for it i hope <laughs> yeah so it will give you that uh, cognizant is a partner and you can see all the details like how many certified people uh, they have for different modules a uh, brief about the company level of the partner that serves uh, cognizant is an allied partner and various stuff so, so this comp the company also give the training uh, to, to their own in house employee or uh, outside also so there are two things okay so there are different levels uh, types of partners okay one is a uh, this technology partners or sales partners other than that there is one type of partner is atp authorized training partners okay so that is the thing uh, every partner gets some count of partner portal accounts that it can give it to its employees depending upon the uh, level of partner suppose if someone has just started its uh, what was the bronze level partner so they get 20 accounts so they can give uh they can have 20 employees having access to partner portal at one point of time so if you are working for a partner then you can easily get a partner portal account and if you talk to your uh service now account manager he would be in a good position to tell you about that okay 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 where was i so we were at now learning so if you see that uh, these are the batches that i have got as a pro administrator super badge or these things so i'll show you how to uh where is that i again have missed it so this time it will take me to my personal account so that i can show you the progress uh hopefully it will take me any to uh log out and log in and these things trouble me a lot i'll take a sign up so if you see that i have completed the star level completely so you just need to complete as soon as you complete you will get a check over here and you need to complete all the activities so just like this and there are certain activities uh that would require a paid training so 
I mean, complete as much as you can. That's the whole scenario. And the way ServiceNow is helping its developers and uh, its people in its environment, I believe that sooner or later, some of the things will be freed, very much freed. Okay, so I'm working on this. So this is one thing that is really important. So currently we have discussed about docs, community, now learning, now creator. Now let's move on to now create. So now create is something very special. Okay, so it has been recently launched. It has some really good stuff. So it is for people who are into implementation stage or want to move to implementation level or consultant level basically. Okay, let me just log into now create. I'll share all these links in one article and will drop you an email. Okay, so when you go on this URL, it would be single sign on. So currently it has three tabs over here. One is uh, first one is the training for how to access these now create website. Second is a success pack and third is an asset. So let's uh, go to success pack. So what does it basically contain? It contains the complete implementation plan for any module that you want to go for. Suppose I want to go for ITSM. Okay. So uh, ITSM modernized IT service management. If I open this, and let it open. So if you see, it has a complete plan from every stage of a project that is initiate, plan, execute, deliver, close, and different levels. Okay, so it is not only an excel sheet it's a project plan so when you implement uh, export it uh, you will get an option to export it in microsoft project export for itbm it's a service now project itbm part where you can manage your project in one go so when you export it from here and import it in the service now instance it would be a grant chart uh, where everything would be planned so you don't have to do anything okay or you can export it to csv so let me just show it your CSV thing. And the best part about this, uh, so let it open. So at every point, what assets we need, like the collaterals, suppose at initiate stage, uh, value management process, everything, business case alignment, I need some document. So I have an, uh, URL associated with it so I can just go on the system and check for that asset or what I can do I can directly uh, go and search an asset from here as well so suppose I want to go for chain management I was recently viewing chain management so I can just view the asset it's the document earlier these documents were there for uh, partner portal accounts only uh, these were one of the things that partners used to get but now I feel that it's for everyone so you can read those documents and these are uh, some of very important documents to give you a brief understanding how things are moving okay uh, so true. can we access this one through personal uh, account as well because i tried yeah. i do not see now no, create That's why. yeah i am logged in through my personal account man i just tried because it's saying yes, sir. either partner or customer yeah let me try shouldn't be maybe but not sure let's check okay. uh, 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 uh. no it's all uh, i just have a vacant so level for everyone hmm? it's for everyone right yeah it's for everyone uh, is just user the SSO or you just need to log in in non learning then type that particular yeah, yeah. no is see, it yeah. Yeah. I just logged in from my personal Gmail yeah see it has taken me yeah, yeah I, I'm also able to log in using personal Gmail I did the same actually and then I put the learn how create Let's connect afterwards. You just show yeah. me that. I'll just yeah, check. Sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, thank you. See, I am able to access that. 
okay now the fun part now let's move on to uh, my recommendations okay so first part would be be sure with your admin stuff is done uh, brush up everything so for that i would recommend the admin training uh, that is currently going on as a self paced on now learning so i'll give you the link i have taken its link and save it over here i'll share it once you are done with that there is one series there are lots of folks as you know in the call itself uh, many folks are currently at admin level and they want to go to developer level okay so for those people uh, there is one thing that you should uh, watch and that is let me just get that link this is one of the javascript series which i really like and you should try this one it's a 54 video series uh, by chuck tomasi and this is one of the series uh, it's core on J javascript but it has been developed in a manner that it focus on the service now aspect so you will find trainings for javascript on various platforms like udemy code academy that totally depends on you but this thing is awesome i mean i really watched it uh, i have recommended it to around 30 40 folks uh, and they have really liked it so do try this and try to finish this on the first instance itself although it's there but really it's really good okay once you are done with that there is one builder series course that you should go for that is a no code application development so i'll share that link i have that one somewhere sorted i have to search i'll share that link okay so it's a builder series it's again on you will find it somewhere builder series so now here it is so it is a uh, it is one of the good series as well i mean it's a step first admin then that javascript series then this builder series then you need to go to the this course uh, on developer.com developer.servicenow.com where you have uh, these scripting start with client side server side application there's nothing uh that can stop you every interview would be cleared from this <laughs> that i can guarantee be because it's the basic although you won't be using scripting that much but you should be aware of it that is one thing okay once you are done with these three four steps then there are a uh, few people that you should follow okay you can follow them over community linkedin or maybe on youtube one of them uh, is chuck tomasi itself then we have mark he writes some great articles okay you can follow him on community you can search him on linkedin he's a good person uh, very nice one then there is one steven bell sir i call him sir he is vastly experienced he creates some really good videos over youtube as the sessions okay i'll show you one of them so that you can get an idea of it so uh if you go over here steven bell service now so wh whosoever is uh, looking for cmdb scripting extra knowledge i mean these are really good series for flow designer he has uh, videos for glide record he has flow designer he has for cmdb he has scripting resources this is the best video you can get i mean it has links for learning powershell javascript angular js everything you need so then he has some best practices kind of thing so he is currently working in essential i guess and he's a mvp as well so just follow his videos i mean once in a watch it one per, per week one on saturday and there is four five channels specifically from service now there are five youtube channels that service now runs and each has its own specific uh, thing so just have a check on them i'll share these videos okay and service now dev program has lcsch so whosoever is looking for integration videos 
I mean, how to integrate, how to start, how things are done in ServiceNow for from integration perspective. Uh, ServiceNow professionals like uh, Dave and you, they come live. They do on weekly basis, I guess weekly or once in a once in ten days or something like that. They build stuffs live. They it's like they have a use case just like we have. They work on it live. They face challenges. They work on it, and it's really good if you kind uh, do side by side practice with them. Okay, so other than that, uh, there is uh, one uh, thing that is currently running by uh, run by Chuck Tomasi is a series called Code Decode uh, API Adventures, and what was the last one? Topical deep dive. Topic deep dive or something like that. It's it's all part of the community live stream. You can find it on the community channel. Yep. So I have put on the that link over here. Uh, all the channels. So just subscribe to them. If you want, we can do a practice that. If you want, I can just put on one link at a time in chat. And if you want to subscribe it right now, it's your call. What do you want? Let's do it later on, right? Yeah, you can paste it. We can. Subscribe it now. Yeah, we can do it later on all together. Okay. Other than that, uh, one person, Goran, he's also an MVP. He's currently working in ServiceNow itself, so he has some good videos, training videos. Other than that, you can subscribe to my channel as well, Trepin Talks. Uh, Glidefast is currently running web, uh, Air Webinar series. That is really good. Whosoever wants to go for service portal, want to understand those stuffs. That series is really good, so you can just subscribe to them as well. Then we have one more guy, Robert. So he is a uh, Vivid Chart CXO. Uh, last year, that application won the Creator Con as well. He is really good when it comes to ITBM project experience. He has one mail list. Okay, so he you need to subscribe to that. Okay, so just subscribe to that. That is really really I would recommend. To do that, uh, let me see if I have the mail list link over here. Mm, here it is. So, just go on this link, subscribe to that. Uh, you will get uh, one minute read emails. Uh, he send emails uh, very frequently, and those emails are out of this world. I mean, it give you the kind of mentality it will provide you while working on service now it's amazing so do not forget to subscribe to his newsletter or his email list it is really good currently he has around almost i guess thousand of these subscribers on his email okay other than that there are lots of stuff man there is one more blog uh, he's a good friend of mine uh jace benson just uh Follow this blog if you want any resources on ServiceNow. This is the best website. So he's Jay Spencer. Uh, he's also a ServiceNow developer MVP. So he writes some really good articles, and you can go on his resources page. If you go over here, you will find everything about ServiceNow. I mean the documentation, the articles, the blog. Every John Anderson's blogs are there. So, Well, so if you want, let's try for Chuck. Let's see. See, he's doing a lot. Oh man. So it's a good thing you can get direct links over here, and the blogs that he's writing are also very good. So the best thing that I recently saw was his uh, K20 sessions review. So you can just have uh, things over here as well. So it's one of the blogs that you should follow. 
other than that there are few folks that you can refer they are really good like uh, adam stout for performance analytics and reporting if you have any issue travis for i usually ref, uh, connect with him regarding my portal related queries or ui related queries uh dark shoes for discovery and item jays benson you can connect him for any scripting issue andrew barnes is our developer advocate he's a uh, I really like him. He he can help you in any manner he could. Nathan Fleur is again for portal and Phil Swan if you want any uh, issue with SecOps. So he's really good with SecOps. Okay. Other than that, there is one article that I wrote. So in case you want to have a check on that, uh, it basically contains the links, additional links other than the now learning training links for scripting update. Uh, different stuff cmdb practice labs let me just open it so so if you find cmdb related links you will find courses mvps lectures virtual agent so just uh, have a check on that as well okay so what else we have over here we have that youtube channel done now create to start yeah that is uh, recently has been launched so just have a check suppose i want to learn about uh, 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 say i want to learn about itsm module i and i don't know where to start okay just go back uh search so there is one kind of document that we uh, product specific my work stream and develop product suit I let's say let's say GRC. We don't have GRC over here. Ah, uh, then let's search for it. Let's search for it. It has been recently launched, so it might be things might be coming up soon. So you will get a uh, customer workshop guides, process workshops, process guides. The best thing that you should search for is process guides. these are really very good articles uh, i mean it, these are the documents uh, i think i need to just reset the filter and then check like change management process guide so it's the uh, let me just download this and we can see it on a bigger screen these documents every module have these like incident will have change will have governance will have risk will have CSM will have one process guide, so it's the basic outline how things work. Okay, so let it open, then I'll show you. Suppose we are looking at the change management document, then if you just go down, uh, it will have the introduction session. Then all the roles that are there, personas are there, everything is there. Then we have how the process moves for, like we have three types of changes, right? normal emergency and standard and how these moves and at which state what happens everything workflows and everything this will give you a head start in the document uh, module so this is one of my approaches uh, where whenever i want to start learning a new module i first uh, go for these process guide documents understand them that what how things are moving then i just go on to youtube those channels and search for the related videos that i get the what exactly they are uh, what business value they are providing to the customers so that uh, it gives you a broader understanding that you know this should be the approach to start it's not like you just had move directly to docs then you would be confused but it's it's a phased approach uh, learning uh, new modules this is one of the approaches you can follow other than that you have trainings as well but i always prefer to go for process guide suppose recently i have been to GRC training. I am enrolled for GRC training that will start next to next week. So what I have done in uh, as a prerequisite, I have read. I am reading those documents, these process guide documents, watching some videos uh, over there, so that it gives me understanding that you know what this what GRC does. And whenever I am going into the training, I would uh, get much more. I would understand it much better. Okay, so that is one of the approaches, and the. And uh, the, yeah. from uh, which resource you are running GRC? Ah, uh, GRC. Okay, same thing, yar. I mean, if you go over here, ah, uh, just like 
change management we have process guide so if you search for process guide for risk i guess uh, here it would be available soon but it was there on partner portal so it would be here soon because we don't have anything for uh, grc yet it would be coming in a coming days uh, maybe in a day or two it would be here so just like for itsm we have change management process guide incident management process guide we will have for grc as well so if you want i can i can tell you show that you on partner portal uh, website as well but soon it would be available here so it shouldn't be a big problem okay okay other than that last step is uh, use community as a net practice okay so uh, suppose i have learned itsm okay so just go to community filter it through forum and see what questions are coming just try to solve them or for yeah or for initial understanding just see the solved questions and try what if if that situation has come to you what you would have done then read the answer that oh this is what we people have suggested this has helped that will really help you to improve okay so now q and a now i'll just uh, keep it side i'll just stop sharing and let's see what questions you have hello Yeah, who's that? Uh, yes, Ravant. Yeah, Ravant. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, right now I'm doing as a service now admin, but I want to move as service now developer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I uh, I know good uh, knowledge on IDSM and the service mm-hmm. catalog. Mm-hmm. So, which modules would you prefer for me to go go on for the develop? See, uh, first you go on. Uh, you clarify your path whether you want to learn about development. so okay. i first clear your admin part that i have showed you uh, redo that stuff be sure that you are good on that then okay. start with the development plan uh, that javascript series if you are comfortable with javascript you can skip few lectures but i would recommend to watch it in one go and come all the videos if not in one go all the videos take that time then okay. understand those scripting part then finish your itsm then there is the scope is very wide you can choose what you want to learn you can start based on your interest if you have itom interest start with an understanding of cmdb then move on to discovery event management service mapping cmp and this way but be sure oh. that you don't leave the previous knowledge i mean it's it's sometimes service knowledge is changing a lot uh, it's really good but we should be in a position that we don't try to achieve something that might end up we might not end up losing the previous things as well so we need yes. to keep a check on that but yes but right now there are no calls for itsm uh, particularly on itsm for requirement right uh, bro it's see uh, if you want to go for module specific that is totally okay but if you go on demand basis then i would recommend to go for csm or hr because currently the job market is demanding them and one more thing i have one no, uh, information i'm not sure whether it's true or not on now learning we are soon going to have uh, csm training it's under preparation so by last quarter i guess in month of november and december it should be there csm fundamentals hr fundamentals free of cost so just keep a check on now learning as well oh okay okay hello yes. yeah dro hi this hi. is tushar uh hello. tushar just hold on who was yeah. that okay. uh, hi i am vibha uh, hi dro uh, hi uh, actually i have a developer experience in um, ruby on rails technology from past 12 years but mm-hmm. now i'm looking to switch uh, my career in service now basically now so um it's like i have given a csa ad- administrator certification as well and i have got that as well uh so i have the basic knowledge of service now as per the admin from the admin lens basically but mm-hmm. now i want to move into development in service now so i have the knowledge of javascript because i am working in javascript from past 12 years uh, mm-hmm. so if it's it's easy for me to uh, 
do the scripting in JavaScript in ServiceNow, but it's like the the you know the it's like a new era for me because I'm coming from a different background. I'm working mm -hmm. on a Ruby on Rails technology, and now I'm moving into ServiceNow. So how would you guide me? You know, so, proceed in Viva, one thing that I will tell you: there are lots of folks that are switching domain to ServiceNow. So yeah. if you go on the environment, uh, even uh, I started my career with PowerShell, then I moved on to ServiceNow, but it was initial for me. So mm -hmm. at your experience level, I would recommend uh, first decide what role you are going to take. Since you have 12 years of experience, yeah. I am damn sure that you are not going to do the development work. You would definitely going to take the consultant role, mm -hmm. right? So for consultant, uh, first I'll recommend to have a basic knowledge of uh, ServiceNow platform, various features like mm -hmm. flow designer integration hub and mm -hmm. cmdb cmdb is quite important for from consultant point of view okay. then uh, then uh, just uh, go on the now create website okay the mm -hmm. one which have the yeah. those plans okay so yep. start picking up the modules okay so just see in the environment what kind of projects that there are uh, we have in your environment mm -hmm. yep and just try reading through those documents okay, okay. and try learning those modules so okay. you just that should be your approach that's what i feel okay so you you reckon that i should not do some development uh, no, in no, no. now no 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 you should go for development what, mm -hmm. what i am saying as based on your experience 12 years mm -hmm. uh, that is what I said that you first need to decide what role you are going to take. I thought that uh, I assume that since you have 12 years of experience, you might yeah. be going for the consultant role, right? Yeah, yeah. Then yeah, that's right. But uh, the thing is like uh, I I am I'm experienced in JavaScript, but I haven't done in service now JavaScript scripting in service now. Yeah. So that's so, what uh, yeah start with that JavaScript series. It's it's very short lectures. Okay. okay? It will yeah. give you a uh, how to transform from your uh, Ruby Rails mm. to ServiceNow. You'll okay. get to know lots of stuff. Then you would be in yeah. a better position to understand what is happening. And your JavaScript experience will become very handy over here. Okay. Okay, great. It didn't, it, uh, Dhruv, could I jump in for a sec? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the, the JavaScript series, some of it may be a little bit basic for you. Like, it starts out with yeah. basic syntax yeah, that's right. and condition statements. You've probably already got a lot of that. Yeah. It is divided into very small modules. So if you wanted to jump ahead to the one on Glide Record, which is how we do our database mm -hmm. APIs, yeah, that'd be a good way to jump around and then say, what am I targeting? The other resource that might be very helpful is is the free learning plans on developer.servicenow.com. You okay. can jump in there and get a developer's taste of what does it take to do an integration? What does it take to you know, update records and, and manage this and do that? And it's it's I, I I had the same situation when I started too. I was very strong in a number of languages, and it was easy to transition. The biggest yeah. challenge, of course, was learning all the scripting APIs. What is Glide Record? What is Glide Aggregate? What is you know, Glide System? What 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 yeah. are these main tools yeah. that you need in your toolbox? That's that's going to be the biggest challenge. I think you'll get a lot of answers there from the learning. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I, I just basically want to create something in ServiceNow. Do you have a, a, a like portal of ServiceNow where I can do some, you know, hands-on um, creation? Yeah, yeah. Of you get uh, go to developer.servicenow.com. You will get a PDF. I'll show you personal yeah, developer so instance getting, where you can do anything over there. Yeah. You can get okay. a free personal developer instance. You can, if, if you make a mess of it, it's completely segregated from your organization. So this is your sandbox to play in. You can mm -hmm. turn on plugins to extend the functionality. You can, uh, if you if you decide that it's getting a little messy, you can wipe it out and start over again. When our new release Paris comes out, we'll, be, we'll have early access first on the personal developer instances. So you could upgrade yeah. to the Paris release before anyone else. And, Start investigating yep. what are the new features, go through the release notes. I'll be doing a webinar later this month on what those Paris features are. So there's okay. there's a lot of benefit to having a PDI. It's, it's just a, a fun place to go, hey, I've got an idea. Let me go try this. Completely risk-free from anything else anyone else is doing. Okay. And how easy will it be for me to get a job in ServiceNow? Because I have no experience in that. <laughs> But I have developer. I, I know scripting. Then how easy will it be for me? 
see a uh, viva job is easy job is, first try to focus on your learning okay so if you are good and uh, then jobs are there there's okay. service now jobs are there the only okay. <laughs> we are the only people in the lockdown uh, okay. in this covid phase that are getting appraisals and everything so okay. service now has jobs jobs is not a problem it's just that you should have the skills so viva when you go on developer side here you have one section uh, called mm-hmm. instance uh, you can either yeah. when you don't have any instance you would have a option to request an instance okay instance yeah that would be your personal developer thing okay okay great thank you so much okay so who's next tushar yeah yeah true thanks uh, i mean i have two questions like uh, i have been working in ibm as a software i mean as a service now administration and developer so we have a couple of things like uh, there is a integration part there is a development part and the administrator part so it's up to me i mean if there is any requirement suppose if uh, a rest api enhancement request is came so can you please suggest me i mean where to start with i mean in rest api how to start with rest api in service now okay so uh on developer.servicenow you have one course related to integrations okay rest api first go on that okay so let me search that one and after that it should be i'll send you the link okay just uh, give me a message i'll drop the link for integration course then the best thing to go is this lchh videos it's live coding happy hour okay so uh that guy is very nice josh so uh here you have all the integration videos i mean how to integrate different stuffs so you can see these videos it will give you a hands on you can practice side by side that's it. that's how i get into integration i was watching their videos i start doing it side by side and it all done and for you focus on latest videos uh using integration hub and flow designer okay rest message is there but just try to ha- use integration hub and flow designer because it has been uh, really uh, it's a great fun thing to do integration very easy and very uh what should okay. i say it makes integration easy or okay. that's the how you should go for yeah, the, and, the, uh, the the challenge with live coding happy hour of course is we're doing this completely unscripted and things may happen so it's it's not a structured learning i've i've had this request a number of times for people to say could you do an episode on integrations and it's bigger than an episode so i talked to my boss last week and said you know i'm starting to hear this request a lot more about a series for integrations so that's in the works uh he fully endorses it i don't know what the time frame is that i'll get that out it'll probably be later in 2020 much like the javascript series you'll be able to jump around and say I want to learn about soap or how do you import a spreadsheet or how do you import knowledge articles I I haven't even laid out the outline in my head yet but I know there's a lot of things that have to happen uh to put that together so once I get rolling it shouldn't take long to produce and release but uh that's look forward to that as well I've heard this request a number of times and I definitely want to respond to it there in the meantime there is the information on the developer portal that walks you through that i even i i asked my boss i said do we need a video series if we've already got this as a as a lesson he said yeah i think we do i said okay <laughs> i just want to make sure that the investment of of doing a whole bunch of videos is worth it and he seems to think it is so we'll go ahead and create that and side by side keep watching api adventures so for india it's like monday thursday 7:30 pm ist half an hour session really good yeah bro i attended last time i mean so one more question bro i mean uh, recently i get a requirement from my from manager there is a service portal work is coming so how to start learning this portal uh bro for service portal uh what i would recommend uh again developer.servicenow.com has some series but for starting purpose you can always uh, watch i have created few videos on service portal three videos that will take you to at least the initial understanding uh, of service portal yeah, reference docs i i i gone through that two to three mm-hmm. videos 
platform and you have created apart from that is there any platform where i can go thoroughly i mean from scratch to advanced i mean about service portal uh there, so there is a service portal training course on now learning uh, my son-in-law went through it and i was watching over his shoulder a few times it's it's your typical three-day virtual led training course and it starts with the basics uh, you'll go into page designer you'll do themes headers footers it does a little bit of custom widgets it doesn't get into that deeply I mean you're not talking about passing things through the data model and and all the nuances that go on there that's that's a whole nother level that can be taken on but um, it's for for what it is it's very good I was surprised I picked up a number of things out of there and you know I've been learning service portal for what now four years and but now nothing ever formally put it all together so it was a great way to fill in a lot of those gaps as well so chuck is it free i haven't checked it <laughs> no i don't believe the service portal one is free i think that is a cost yeah. effort but it's it's well worth it i was impressed um i yeah. think there, there was a gentleman it was a i'm fairly certain it was a guy from accenture that was training it mm -hmm. Yeah, for service portal, you can also go for uh, Glidefast series. That is uh, really good. I mean, they are teaching uh, uh, portal. Get the free course from partner portal. <laughs> no, partners okay. will get a discount. There's nothing free for partners. Yeah, yes. I have checked it. There is a 50. Okay, no problem. That's it. So one more question. Last question is, I mean, you have showed that there are four self-paced. Uh, I mean, on partner portal. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some discovery event management courses. So is there any expiry date for that? I mean, if I want to enroll in after two months, so can I enroll for self-paced? program yeah, from partner yeah. portal uh, these things are subject to change man i mean uh, it they are there for last two years okay not okay. if not last two years there are there for at least one year but you never know right if it is free just why not to take that advantage i mean 15 right. days are more than enough to complete those things yeah yeah that's that's from my side thank you Dro. thank you chuck Hey, hi, Dro. Uh, Navin here. Yeah, Navin. So uh, basically, I'm a service now administrator now. So I want to move on ITS, ITOM side, like uh, CMDB and event management side. So should I need to complete that ITSM? Is that uh, mandatory to require to move to CMDB side or? No, they are not required, but somehow they are interconnected because uh, everything incident problem change is related to CI. So if you have a good understanding yes, I, of yeah correct i have an idea about it but i have yeah, uh, developed that's, that's, anything. yeah that's more than enough you can just start with cmdb then go to these trainings that would yeah. be more than enough and it includes any uh, scripting in cmdb or event management uh it depends on the requirement man if you are using out of the box things then it is fine but if you are using something that you need to design a connector for say in event management then you need to uh, do scripting but it is very rare, very rare. Very rare. Most right, of the but, are... Yeah. So that is what. Since uh, I was an admin, so I, I didn't have a chance to work on the script, and uh, so I'm skipping from uh, ITSM. So again, but, I'm going back. <laughs> going. Yeah. Around. I mean, but I would recommend to have a you know at least a base on scripting as well, because okay. it, you should be aware how to code those business rules and everything. Sure. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, bro. Uh, yeah. Hi, bro. This is Mohan. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, I mean, I had around uh, uh, like a four uh, plus years of experience in service now development. So, uh, I mean, uh, I just uh, joined Cognizant. I just did this uh, partner portal access, and mm -hmm. I just completed this uh, sysadmin course, and I got these vouchers. So mm -hmm. I mean I just joined this call a little bit late. So can you just tell me what are all the other uh, courses that I can uh, attend and get these vouchers and then complete the other certifications just uh, available right now? Currently we have APM, PPM, Discovery, Event Management, and Admin. Okay. Okay. 
and additional training for service mapping the fundamentals one but no voucher against that but fundamental service mapping is a good training okay other than that we have few simulators for discovery as our uh, discovery and cmdb just try to solve them they are available on now learning so good stuff i mean lots of stuff is there for us it's just that we need to explore okay okay and one more thing like say during this lockdown uh, like uh, i mean can we take this uh, csa exam uh, from our personal laptop i mean is there any <laughs> Uh, bro I mean, uh, that is the one thing that i'll tell you uh, i have uh, two three exams to be given definitely you can give it from home okay you need just need okay. an external camera other than the camera that is there in laptop other than that you need an external camera okay, okay. but i always prefer to do for on site uh, on the center because i don't want to worry about the internet connectivity and all of those things while working on an exam totally personal okay. basis but you have an option to go for that okay okay yeah thanks uh, yeah thanks yeah who was there pranka uh, yeah 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 so like uh, i have 5 years of experience but not in the service now mm -hmm. and i have done that service now fundamental training and that j uh, series by chuck but mm -hmm. like i am not getting confident for the dollar so what should i do ah uh, you should do practice I mean, like uh, i am just wondering like uh, uh, for the use cases what should i practice and like how to use the apis like uh, the glide all those what like, should scenario should i co uh, consider for practice chuck can you help her i mean developer thing is fine i mean you will get the trainings and everything on the documents or you can use our yeah. uh, community for use cases i mean if you go on community go to the forum developer community okay, okay. there uh, you will have the people posting use cases yeah i tried few okay and if you want to see how documents work let me show you one thing uh, if you have been on developer site developer dot service now yeah if you go over a uh, reference uh, say if i go on for here i can just uh, try this i'll get all the functions that are there with an example i just need to search for them and just we can practice this could be one scenario i mean if you want to learn about this glide system glide record specifically you can come over here if you want use cases you can just go on play on pdi play on yeah, i'm working on that only i mean these so things you will get yeah. these things you will get through practice only practice yeah. you will stuck you will solve one thing i found very helpful it, it came out of the first sys admin course i had back in 2008 is take a look at some of the examples that are available on your system go through the business rules get familiar with the script includes yeah. there's if you go into studio and you see something that that you don't understand search for it find out how it's used i, I that's what i do a lot i said hey i was looking at the array util script include saying what is convert array does anybody use that and i found out yes they do use it and how they use it and that cuz there's little there's there's certain places where the document is documentation is a little thin like you won't have a sample script in all of these APIs unfortunately we're working on that and we recognize that but there's there's places where the out of box examples can be just as educational as anything else okay okay thank you yeah uh do i see yeah yeah to Uh, Rubh, uh, would you recommend me to learn GRC at this stage, or uh, do I need to wait for some time to get you know mature? No, no, there is no time to wait, man. You should just start learning. As you as you get an understanding, the there might be courses coming soon or something like that. So you it will brush you up. Okay, so just first start, start. There is no time to wait. Just start, just learn. Okay, so uh, talking about specific to India, so is there any job opportunity on demand for specific GRC module? Uh, 
um i'm not sure about that job thing okay but grc is a kind of a module that certainly have lots of demand even in my organization we are looking for grc resources there were few notifications for us as well so demand is there for every module is you is just the skill set you can learn every module it's not like you need to restrict yourself to one module okay just understand the basics service now every module of service now is based on its platform so if you have an understanding of the platform you just just need to understand the functionality it provides everything will work so it's just you need to have a you strong this confused like between uh, secops and grc so is the same thing ah uh, see ideally grc comes under secops in global domain but uh, in service now under the umbrella secops has security incident response and vulnerability response grc is a uh, other thing okay but it is uh, one they are connected i mean in grc also uh, grc basically compliance thing so we bring on the documents policy statements from the in, uh, rep- repositories like if we want to be compliant to iso hipaa then we need to perform certain things and secops is like whenever there is a security incident breach or we are preparing before breach so vulnerability response would be a proactive approach so that uh, we are pre- patching our cis okay so that is a long discussion if we get right. into it so the, the, this both will come under umbrella as cyber security right in general terms it does but uh, if you see i'll show you that from certification perspective let me just check on that uh, 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 what is that what is that let me just recopy that link uh, Yeah, GRC is under SecOps only. So SecOps has a uh, uh, vulnerability, vendor risk, security incident, and risk and compliance. They are all under SecOps only. And on law law learning, I check there is no free content actually for GRC. So it's paid. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, currently, it's paid, but ah, uh, GRC is not coming in this year as a free. but uh, it would be there in 2021 that but i know but there is no surety about it but apart the grc from, yeah apart from docs dot service no there is no content where i can learn only that content uh, is there there is ma'am there is that that's what i said that you need to focus on those channels so if i go on eric ferron videos eric ferron service now <laughs> uh let me just search so is now webinar uh so is now community channel is there playlist see there on the top page you are having sessions for grc if you go down uh, you will find sessions by eric ferron so he is a product manager at service now for grc i guess so there are lots of grc sessions over here so you just need to go to playlist and search for your thing see emergency response is there vendor management is there there are lots of i mean the channels it's important okay i'll share those channel links you will find everything over there uh dhruv last question <laughs> Uh, like as you suggested, like uh, there are uh, course uh, by Chuck uh, for JavaScript, and so I am admin and I am also learning this development part. Uh, so, anyways, the development part is uh, mandatory for all modules. So, what would be like two modules would you suggest me where it requires very less scripting uh, to learn? Ah, uh, like HRSD. Uh, HRSD. Ah. Uh, So, I mean, scripting. You just need to have a base on scripting. It's not like you need to be a pro or legend in that. Just basic idea. 
and if you want something that has very less scripting then it's item related modules where you have to just configure stuff but uh, that needs practice just create a base just create a base there's there's also a lot of capabilities on the platform that don't require scripting so i mean yeah. it, i have to keep reminding myself of this every day you can do a lot without scripting i i've been a developer for over 35 years and my natural tendency is oh, i'll just write a script for that what i forget you can do it a lot easier and faster and easier to maintain with something like flow designer or possibly even a business rule to do data validation you don't have to do a lot of this stuff especially if you come from like a more traditional javascript background you might even be thinking of the client script first like mm, no that's that's probably the last thing you want to try doing is writing a client script to to solve some of these problems and and the the other important thing to recognize is just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something there are a lot of requirements out there that are asking for very complex customized hard to test expensive things to build if it takes you six weeks to build something that somebody wants you know this this piece of functionality it's probably going to be very costly to build and maintain and test and potentially get in the way of upgrades so you have to weigh the cost of implementation and maintenance against the benefit i know that's not typically what a lot of developers get into but it it should be in the back of your mind that this is really hard and if it's really hard my boss should know about it or the person who made this requirement should know about it and they may say you know what it's not that important let's just go with whatever's out of the box because what we found is a lot of customers years later say man i really wish we didn't do all that customization we don't need all this complex logic we're better off sticking with what ServiceNow gives us out of the box and they end up doing this very expensive re-implementation going back to baseline we've seen this a number of times and it's very sad they say i wish i could go into the future or into the past and tell my future self don't do that it's not that important so i, I think many customers have to go through that learning process because they think their processes are so unique and custom that they've got to have you know this special logic you you as a developer should first think is there a way to do this without any code and that's that's really where flow designer and the new process automation designer that's coming out later is really going to help flatten that curve i hate to use that term right now but of of cost and expense and, and increase the return on investment and exactly the point is uh, that is the difference when you are a starter as a developer and you progress so it's you have if you want to move one step ahead you just need to as chuck mentioned first analyze the requirement whether it's good or not but yeah for every module somehow to understand the functionality as well sometimes you need to understand the code uh, go to script includes and everything so basic idea is at least uh, what you should have that's what i feel all right no problem uh, thank you Dhruv. thank you chuck you're very welcome thanks for your question yeah uh, 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 this is mohan again yeah uh, someone else was there just just uh, mohan just wait yeah. uh, who was that yeah this side archana yeah archana hi dro hi chat dro so uh, i have 7 years of experience and i am an admin i am an admin and uh, i am going through cmdb fundamentals training right now so after that can i go to this uh, success pack or what you say uh, now create documents mm, yeah you can go to that uh, that now create is module specific and all uh, so if you have a good understanding of cmdb then and you want to move into item space so initial phases would be first focus on cmdb then and have a understanding of discovery okay that how it is running because in item you would be getting requirements to implement discovery or module specific right so you should have a idea about discovery and all. at least discovery so that you should understand how the mid servers work discovery works pattern works so once you have an idea you would be quite good in the item space then you can just go on the now create now create is basically for understanding the initial stuff that what discovery does and how should you uh, it has the documents that would help you in the requirement uh, implementation of a project every phase of a project whether it's requirement gathering testing everything 
so it will fasten up the implementation but you need to have a base will do that and i was going through this discovery and service mapping doc and uh, there it was written like uh, for uh, implementing these these stuff uh, and plugin have to be activated mm -hmm. so and that is chargeable uh, on pdi you can do anything i mean practice on pdi right play on pdi yeah. install yeah. your set up your uh, small environment on aws or somewhere else install that mid server just practice so in developer portal it's not possible right developer portal developer. plugin enablement of discovery yeah. for your yeah. it's possible you can enable those plugins and it is not chargeable there no 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 plugins would be chargeable only on the production instances not even on the not at all on your personal developer instance and on the client instance as well on testing and sandbox instances it is not chargeable it is chargeable only on the production instances i can do that in the developer portal yeah yeah, yeah. you can do anything on developer portal burn it we don't and I will, I will let you know okay. thank you yeah mohan yeah uh, yeah so, yes there was. so i just joined little late to this meeting so i couldn't able to note on all the youtube channels those things that you mentioned that, so that i just I'll take share. a note of some of the thing no no i'll yeah, share i what i'll do i'll create one article in the community and i'll paste all the links there and okay. i'll mail you the article link as well as the feedback link so you can just have a check on that yeah yeah sure thank you yeah okay uh, uh, okay Dhruv, hi, Ah, who was that? Maruti. Yeah. Yeah, Dhruv. So my question is, uh, Dhruv, let's say a person who is having a five years of experience and who want to be a service on developer. Mm -hmm. It should be a module specific, or uh, they need to drive from admin then to ITSM then to ITYM like that. Ah, uh, first go for admin. I mean, basic should be there. So how service now is built on is on the platform itself. So if you are good at platform, if you have an introduction on the platform, then you can go for any domain. But first, you need to have an understanding of admin and basics. Yeah, yeah. So ITSM is not the mandatory one, right? After admin, we can approach any of the model, right? Yeah, that is that is something that you know it totally depends on you. If you want want to go on ITSM, people usually follow that path because service now started with ITSM, I guess. Uh, then it other modules come afterwards. So. And most of the initial implementations were on ITSM itself. Currently, we have lots of on ITSM. So that totally depends on you. I mean, once you are good at base, then you can choose your domain. You are free to move. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dhruv. Yeah. Hi, Dhruv. Pursue uh, this side. Yeah. So, uh, Dhruv, I've been working as a service now developer for the past two years, and I've been working on like ITSM modules. And on the rest integrations and on service portal, right? And I also have completed my uh, certified system administrator exam also. So actually, uh, I need your suggestion on the uh, path which I should take uh, in uh, the future. Because, for example, I was basically planning to get uh, the CIS certification and the service portal certification, right? So uh -huh. at present, uh, I checked that the service portal certification was kind of a paid course, right? The micro uh -huh. certification uh, was basically dependent upon the fundamental course, which was a paid one, right? Uh -huh. So I'm actually uh, looking to invest into the CIS module first, CIS exam first, right? So uh -huh. uh, my question to you is that, for example, we uh, follow open source kind of uh, uh, stuff, right? The YouTube channels, the blogs for our learning to learn like uh -huh. flow designer, integration hub, service portal. So, uh -huh. uh, is it a kind of a necessity to have that certification for the credibility part or uh, uh, the skills matter? Skills matter, man. Because certifications will come and go, okay? Certifications okay. will help you understand the module and it is important, but... Uh, yeah. Map, most of the time it's the skills okay rest depends on the job requirement or the client requirement <laughs> yeah so currently i'm working in a company which is no which is not a partner uh, mm -hmm. right so the thing is that i have to pay for my own vouchers and everything right 
so uh-huh. that is where my concerns lies so currently uh, so for example uh, i have i have some experience on the service portal development so the path which i am uh, carving out for myself is that i'll continue with the open source things and as soon as i'm ready to invest into these certifications and parts uh, then i'll pick them up right yeah so, just check uh, i guess apm and ppm are on personal instances as well apm and okay. ppm cis certifications are on personal developer instances as well that's what i think just have a check okay so uh, from your experience uh, dhruv uh, which are the best free courses or the certifications which i can pursue directly so for example service now service portal is a paid one but are there any certifications or micro certifications which are free micro right certifications are portal. almost every micro certification is free only two three are there that are paid like service portal one for i guess service portal and performance analytics is paid rest of them are free so you can just go on now learning enroll for them just study and give that exam and moreover the micro certifications are open book exam that you don't need to go on any center you can give it from your home it's an open book exams with around 20 okay. or options great and uh, this last question so i have just uh, recently uh, switched a company and uh, i have been uh, invested into a project which is working on the csm module right so i am having experience on the itsm service catalog and rest integrations so what do you suggest for me to get started on the csm module csm module brother first thing you need to understand that uh, it's a scope thing okay so mm-hmm. uh, whenever you are working on something it's scope then few things changes not much and from learning perspective go to youtube channel there are lots of CS, uh, csm related webinars videos they will give you a great start i have started from that as well i mean before getting the trainings i was working on csm and i learned through those youtube videos only they are from scratch okay and one more thing uh, see you would go for training that is good but before going to training you should be that's how i approach so i will tell you things that i was preparing for any module suppose grc is there so first i what i'll do i'll uh, download its blueprint i showed you one right cis blueprint right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. just see the contents for the exam okay and search them one by one in that way you would be studying the same thing that you would be getting in the training almost the same mm-hmm. and yeah. watch those videos now create is good so you can be prepared okay and that is more than enough to work for certification yes there are lots of stuff in the training as well csm training is really good uh if kind of hands on it gives it's amazing but if you can't uh if you don't have an option right now then you can just pick two things up hello duro this is manoj yeah manoj yeah thank you thank you for this uh, uh session actually i am very different from all the group i think uh, because i am new to service now and uh, about me i have experience uh, of in uh, academics and consulting electrical engineering so uh, what found uh, what i found in service now is uh, its automation in business process and uh, transparency in uh, uh, every uh, you know uh, process so one of my students is working in service now domain so uh-huh. he is teaching me service now currently and uh, uh, what i did is i have completed that certified system administrator uh, training and i uh-huh. got that voucher also uh-huh. so what i need uh, your uh, suggestion is uh, for me like us uh, having 8 years of experience in electrical engineering core uh-huh. uh having worked in uh, academic uh, institute uh, engineering institute as a professor and as a electrical engineering consultant so how do you uh, what kind of suggestion for me from your side uh, to move career from uh, electrical engineering to uh, it uh, on service now platform so it all depends see even i don't have that much experience
you can take a path if you want to be an implementation specialist you can take another path that totally depends on you so if okay you now my, uh, my my only confusion is i mean i am uh, i have doubt whether uh, with zero knowledge of uh, this it field can we have a expertise on this this platform for uh, next one or two years if you work hard is or do you need some it basics of it mm, i guess chuck would be in a better position to answer this because he has around great experience i i would say you know if you apply yourself you could be easily marketable in about 6 months it, it shouldn't take okay. longer than that to get uh, it, to to have a, enough expertise experience certifications to to present a resume or cv to an employer that would be uh you know acceptable that being said it, you getting back to your electrical engineering um that already tells me i've i've got an electrical engineering background as well as computer science that okay that tells me you've got you know, a, a logical brain you understand things like boolean algebra and and you know, the 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 concepts of uh, of a lot of this stuff will come very easy to you because you've already got that analytical technical brain that uh, would work well for this so it it feels to me i'm not i'm not going to make any strong statements but it feels to me like a developer position would be uh, a suitable approach for you something you might be interested in and and would come easier to you than and say some of the other roles like a business analyst or a process analyst not saying that that's out of the question if you want to do that that's certainly available but uh, that's probably where i would start yeah thank you thank you jock and duro uh, definitely i will be in touch with you and uh, sure, sure sure just message yeah, me thanks. i'll be there to help there's no yeah yeah actually actually in my graduation like after btech Uh, I had been offered in cognizant, but I could not join that time. <laughs> Then I spent my eight years in electrical engineering domain. Now I am find uh, interesting uh, things in uh, IT, and which is um, service now based uh, to be specific. Yeah, man. Welcome to the community. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for this session. Yeah. Thank you. So, who's next? Hey, uh, through this is Arti. I just have one quick question. Uh, mm-hmm. Going back to service portal, is there any resource that you would recommend for um, you know um, Angular JS? Because that seems to be one challenge for me, um, specifically okay. as it pertains to service portal uh, to service now. Uh, okay, so what I'll recommend you to watch. Okay, so just uh, search over here, Stephen. Bell. Uh, okay. So he has one webinar on Stephen Bell. So now let me just search. So if you go over here, scripting resources visited. He has mentioned every training for Angular. You should go for PowerShell. What you should go for? Every scripting resource is there. So just uh, I'll just copy this URL uh, link address and I'll just share it with you. Just have a check on that. We've also covered um, service portal widgets uh, and Angular JS on Live Coding Happy Hour a number of, a number yep. of times. Um, I believe I added tech now. Traditional. Angular person, and you've done this before. There's still certain nuances about ServiceNow that you need to know about. Some of them are time savers. Some of them will leave you scratching your head. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you very much, Chuck and Drew. And one recommendation: just start looking into Now Experience. Now Experience. Yep, I'm not disclosing anything, but Now Experience is something that is coming. And. I I can speak to that if you like. There there it's yes. not it's not a total secret. We're we're redoing the user interface and in service now into what we call now experience. We originally the UI if you've dealt with the platform or the standard UI some people call it um is was built around jelly templates. 
Jelly nice. was uh, an Apache project that was spun off. It was it was it was an XML kind of thing, and and it worked well for its time. But that was you know, 15 years ago. We realized that that wasn't quite as flexible and adaptable, and the skill set wasn't there. So we adopted about 2014 and launched it in 2016 is when we said, all right, Angular is the cool new kid on the block. We'll go with that. And then shortly after, Google abandoned it. So now we're left with another technology that's, you know, finding skill set is a little easier than it was for Jelly, but it's not moving forward. And, and customers are saying, wait a minute, I just invested all this time in building out this beautiful experience, and now you're telling me that it's not going to work again. Or, or you're moving on, or what do we do with React.js, or whatever the new kid on the block is in two, three, four, five years, are we going to keep going through this same iterative process? So we said, no, we're not. We're coming out with an intermediary layer of web components-based technology where you can build these components that, uh, that will continue to work. And whatever the underlying technology is, think of it like as middleware. Okay. You're going to be building in this middleware layer. You'll create a presentation. We've got some, uh, like the developer portal is all based on the now experience technology. Workspace is probably the shining example. Uh, if you've dealt with the agent workspace in ServiceNow or seen it, or if you haven't seen it, go take a look at some of the videos. It enables some truly modern and, and performance-based capabilities that, uh, frankly, weren't possible in Jelly or Angular. Uh, that that we can tie into so we're just starting to expose that in the latest in the Orlando release to customers on workspace landing pages there's there is a another learning curve so all of our sort of developers are starting at the starting line again doesn't matter if you're just getting started or if you've got decades of experience like me we're all going to learn what it takes to do that now a lot of people who have done node.js will glom right onto this it's very very Node.js based. Uh, but again, there's there's going to be some nuances that we all need to be aware of, passing information from the server to the client and uh, all that good stuff is, is going to be coming over. But the good news is we don't have to do this again in five years if you know React goes away and it's the next technology. Our components will still be able to work in that environment. And we can stop this rebuilding every few years on whatever the new technology is and the relearning on that technology so that we can build on that. That's that now experience is sort of an umbrella that contains everything from building custom components to placing them on a page or uh, that kind of thing to the the whole experience hence the name now experience is kind of generic. We didn't give it anything creative like Lightning or Einstein or something that Salesforce would have, but uh, yeah, we, we tend to be a little more boring but pragmatic about our product naming. Uh, so that's when you hear that, that's going to be the next experience. I really, really, really want to do a series on Service Portal, but I think it's a little too late. That uh, it, you know, if, if I ask my boss to do that, he'd say, "No, do a series on Now Experience because we need to get people spun up on that faster." And if you want to start, there was a knowledge session as well, and it's on now learning as well. So you can just check that out. Good point. Good point. And, and all of the, uh, uh, whether they're breakouts, uh, the, uh, a lot of the information from knowledge is still out there and will be for months. So if you go to knowledge.servicenow.com and check this, uh, I think it's the scheduler or the agenda, I can't remember which, but you can search for some of those terms as well and on don't write, watch the videos as if it were early May again. Yeah, and most of the, this stuff is moving on now learning as well. So you just keep the, the workshop, the hands-on stuff is moving to now learning, but the breakout sessions are still available. Uh, I think I saw one on now learning itself. There's a lab for now experience on now learning itself. Yeah, right. Labs and workshops. Anything that's hands-on needs an instance, and that's where we go to now learning. Yep. But if it's just if it's just a, a theater session or a breakout session, one of the one of the talks where there's no hands on, if somebody's just describing what this is or what the direction is or how they implemented this, those would still be on knowledge. Yeah. Uh, so, Chuck, is now experience coming as an alternative to service portal, or uh, are they like standalone kind of thing? 
Like, they are they are completely separate. Yeah, yeah they are they are completely separate technologies. Uh, just as CMS was separate from Service Portal, CMS was based on the uh, Jelly technology. It, Service Portal is Angular. Now experiences is, is this newer intermediary technology that won't change in the future. So, yeah, there's there's no click a button and have my me upgraded. But uh, in terms of technical debt, we're going to see a lot less technical debt using now experience in the future. Okay, and um, I guess it is not uh, going to be Service Portal Classic, right? I mean, Service Portal Classic. Service Portal is going to be renamed as Service Portal Classic, and now experience is going to be in front. That is my guess. Okay, but yeah. So yeah, Service Portal is not going away. I, yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't have spent the last year building out a custom app on Service Portal if it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah man. Okay. So anything else? We we have already spent two hours, more than two hours. Hey. Uh, hey, Adi. I have a request for check and true. Uh, is it possible for you to like come up with uh, use cases kind of thing for uh, uh, the development, uh, like you know, for the glide record and for like you know, each of the developer uh, um, APIs, uh, so that for somebody like us who are transitioning from admin to developer, uh, we have something to practice. Uh, is that too much of an ask? I would I would start with that JavaScript series. There's yep. there's a 12 minute video that gets you introduced to Glide Record and what it is. So it's not real heavy. You can you can watch it at double speed if you like. I talk kind of quick anyway, but uh, <laughs> uh, it, it will get you introduced to what you do and why you do it and, and how you do it. And then from there, really it's it's uh, I I go through the document page and say what are the what are the other APIs? What does Add Encoded Query do? What does Choose Window do? What does uh, and and you, you start getting ex examples of those and practicing with them. And now you know from Glide Record how to interact with the database more effectively. I need this series of records that match this query. I mean, most 90% of what I do with Glide Record is go get a table, set up a filter with add query, and go get some records and stick them in an array or return a result or find out if something exists. They're very, very short operations, maybe seven lines of code tops. Yeah. And if you follow the series that are currently going on, if you want to see uh, that I mentioned Monday, Thursday, 7.30 p.m. IST. So you will find some use cases there, here and there. New topics and topical de uh, topic deep dive or topical deep dive? Uh, hello, Guru and Sir. Yes. Uh, yes, I, I want to know about what is a hackathon. What is a hackathon? Great question. Uh, a hackathon is an event that we hold periodically where people set up teams, either physically or virtually, and they're given a time frame, whether it is eight hours or 36 hours or you know, some short time to build something. It, 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 it's totally your decision what you want to build. It's a contest. And uh, oftentimes there are prizes. We had one at Knowledge. The grand prize was $5,000 US for the first place. And, and typically it involves uh, you know, building something on the ServiceNow platform that uses a wide variety of the platform capabilities. So you, know, you, may, you may dig into Integration Hub and Flow Designer and then include a portal to present your stuff in a nice clean format and uh, it's built around a use case that usually the people know about and care about. They say, hey, I, I used to be in the airline industry and we had this problem with fuel consumption and or, or uh, uh, reports of airline incidents, broken tray table or you know, a, a mess on the carpet. And the, the attendants didn't have a way to report that. So they built an app around that use case. And then at the end, you present your, use, your case there's a judging panel, and they figure out who the winner is. We've held these at major events like Knowledge. We hold them regionally and, and periodically, uh, even for internal companies. They say, hey, you've got, you know what your processes are. 
So let's go and fix them in a really short time. The, the whole idea is, look how fast we can build things on the Now platform. That's what it boils down to. Yeah, yeah. solve business Thank problems, you. solve business problems through Now platform. That's the whole idea of Hackathon. Show us what you get. Okay. So let's take last two, three questions. Do we have anyone? What, we're not going for another six hours? <laughs> no, not for me, not for you as well. You need to, you need to take a breakfast, man. You and I need to go for dinner. <laughs> I'm that early to bed, early to rise kind of a guy. Okay, so anyone else? Any questions now? Great question. But... So, Dhru, um, any suggestion for, uh, I mean, those who are not from the uh, coding background and if they want to decode the code, suppose if uh, there is a business rule written or client script written and they want to check, I mean, I want to just know about the mindset when you are creating a business rule or client script. Uh, mindset, I mean, you build it on the basis of a requirement, okay, so if you are uh decoding so, any business rule yeah yeah so this question is uh, from the perspective of suppose i am working uh, in a service now project and i want to just uh, know i mean i'm just doing a practice by checking the business rule client scripts of others like someone is populating the data on mm -hmm. basis of i mean there is application on basis of application they are populating the assignment group so, uh -huh. uh, so, and is there any way to decode that? Uh, I mean, the scripting part. So, why it is going on and how it is going on? And what should be the mindset when creating a business rule or client script? See, every, these are components. Business rule, client script. These are all components, and they are have certain use cases. Okay, so if i am creating a script include so it would be a function that i would be calling more than one time if it is a business rule then i would be creating it to up, uh, be on the server side uh, after any database operation okay and client script, client script. that is the mindset i mean that is the use case and when you want to decode just start the code search for the function that is there and currently uh, we have one functionality, I guess it comes in the New York that uh, while you are searching for the script include, you are going through the code, uh, you, you would find that uh, if you need to understand what that function is doing, you just need to right click on that function, it will open that definition. Okay, you can just see what that function is doing directly from that. Earlier it used to be that for suppose in a script include, I get a function that ABC. Then I need to go back to the list of script include, search for that function, then see what is there. But now you can just directly right click and open definition. So this is how you can move forward. First understand those components and their use cases. Then while decoding, just make use of this open definition thing. And if you're the author of one of these scripts, please put in comments. Comments. <laughs> and maybe even use the description field. I, ironically enough, the description field does not on the business rule form by default. So on all new instances, what I typically do is put the description field out there. It's available. It's, it's on the table. It's just not on the form. And that can really help people understand what you're trying to do. And most of the time it is missing when somebody is creating that <laughs> and just put some good names i mean names of the business rule that are and that make it a bit more clear that what that business rule is doing i mean i went to an environment where they were having abc as business rule bcd as another business rule i was like what what the hell you are doing here <laughs> <laughs> no you call it things like you know assign default uh, you know, assigned to when state is new or you know, it, it just that that's a much better naming scheme yeah and some people will put a prefix of of maybe what process it's on they'll put like chg for their change request yeah as, as a prefix i've seen that yeah i do that i mean i use that approach that I, whenever i am creating anything 
first i put the first three letters of the client name suppose i am working for service now i'll put on ser underscore then the module then the what exactly that thing is doing so it's easier for me to manage and understand for others as well <clears throat> okay so anything else or should we close it now so what would be the next session and uh, when it will be happening our uh, next session would be soon okay so when i'll share the feedback form it will have one field called topic okay so you just need to put on the topic so it would be a vote based thing okay so more if i, I virtual agent get more votes we'll speak on that totally dependent on you and we'll try to do the session as early as we could okay 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 so then thank you very much thank you everyone thank you chuck for being there oh, you're very welcome thanks for having me yeah. okay so guys would you be sharing the recording ah uh, sorry would you be sharing the recording of the session ah uh, i i have to check whether i have turned on the recording or not if i had i would have uploaded it It was really informative. Thank you yeah. very much. Thanks a lot, uh, Dhruv and Chuck and everyone. Uh, it was uh, really informative. Uh, thank you, Dhruv. Thank you. Great session. Thank, thank you, Dhruv, for the information. Okay, man. Okay. So, in case you need anything, just message me over LinkedIn. So, I'll be there. And all the best. Enjoy your weekend. It's almost over. Thanks, everybody. Be safe. Yep. Thank you, though. Thank you, Chuck, and thank you, everyone. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Dhruv. Thank you, Chuck.